Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Kim from Korea. So my topic this morning is lungoplasty. So I have nothing to be clear. Uh, in my talk, I'm going to briefly review the cervical lungoplasty, and I'd like to introduce my own uh, technique of unilateral open door lungoplasty, especially using the ultrasonic osteotone and hydroxyapatite spacers. Case of cervical OPLA from C2 to 6, as you can see here. So, the, the cervical OPLA is the well known common cause of cervical, sometimes thoracic myelopathy, especially in the elderly patients, and the treatment could be very challenging. And the lack of clinical, uh, the clear guidance on the indication or sometimes the timing of the surgery. It comes from the lack of large prospective randomized studies. OPLA, especially in the cervical area, uh, is mostly found uh, at C3 to 6. And uh, in a report, the most uh, maximum thickness is located usually at C5, as you can see in this table. Cervical OPLA is classified usually into four types. The most common type is segmental type, followed by continuous and um, mixed and the uh, localized type, as you can see here. Again, the treatment, optimal treatment for the uh, CSM, so correspondent myelopathy or OPLA is very challenging and controversial. We can do uh, traditionally the anterior cervical discectomy plus fusion through the anterior approaching. Now what about the posterior approach? We usually do cervical laminectomy or laminoplasty. So the, so far, uh, any published data do not reveal the superiority of any one surgical approach over other. The cervical laminoplasty was introduced from the poor result of conventional classic laminectomy. Uh, Dr. Oyama, uh, he introduced in 1973 expensive Z-shaped laminoplasty, and after then, uh, him, uh, many Japanese doctors introduced the laminoplasty. You know, the, in 1977, Dr. Hirabayashi he introduced very well-known expensive open-door laminoplasty. After his introduction, many types and variations of the laminoplasty were introduced uh, to improve the safety and efficacy of the decompression and for the stability of the spine. This figure demonstrates the typical uh, techniques of the laminoplasty. And French door midline splitting, and finally, the open door single, uh, single door laminoplasty. This is another uh, illustration for the modified uh, laminoplasties here. So uh, Dr. Hirabayashi method is well known, unilateral open door laminoplasty. Uh, Dr. Kurokawa method is well known, French door midline splitting laminoplasty. And we can see many other uh, modifications as well. After single door laminoplasty, we can put bone graft or spacers. And we can use uh, the laminoplasty uh, plate or some doctors are doing muscle stripping approaches. This was done 10 years ago by myself. Uh, at that time, I used to perform the laminoplasty like this. I used to only the mini plate, titanium mini plate, like the, uh, as you can see here. But sometimes we found the, uh, the dislodgement of the laminoplasty. Uh, plates and screws, as you can see on the right case. And we can use uh, the commercialized laminoplastic plates sometimes. And I think the ideal method of the laminoplastic could be technically easy and safe. It could provide solid bone fusion and uh, if it can offer immediate strong rigid fixation. 
And sometimes after using the mini plate laminar plastic, we can find the, the metal, uh, metallic artifact reduction on the follow-up MRI, as you can see on the right-hand MRI. This is my own uh, technique of laminar plastic. I adapted the hydroxyapatite spaces made from the uh, Pentax Japan, and I added the mini plate, as you can see here. The unique shape of the uh, space provides firm fixation to the uh, both side bony edges. This is an article promote uh, the motivated my method. The Japanese doctors here in this paper, they published in, in 2008, uh, they compared interconnected for a calcium hydrous uh, appetite versus autogenous bone graft. They use the good osteoconductivity of the hydrox appetite, and their conclusion was uh, it was the safe and simple method to yield the sufficient uh, fixation strength. Uh, these are the main features, advantages of uh, hydrox appetite ceramics. Uh, they have biocompatibility and they have osteoconductivity. So, uh, since 2008, I started uh, this method. This is the first case I did in this method. This patient was presented with quadriparesis from cold down. So I did three levels, laminar plus, as you can see here. This is another case of four level laminar plus. In this specific patient, I added the uh, anterior surgical spectrum at C34 as well. This is four cases illustrating the picture. So we analyzed uh, from 2008 to 13. Uh, we collected the data from, uh, from the patients diagnosed with spondylomyelopathy or OPLA. There were uh, 38 patients. We elevated 125 lamina. We used the Frankel grade and JOA scale to analyze the clinical outcome and we did the radiographic analysis as well. This is how we did, how we measured it on a plain X-ray, the cervical curvature and range of motion from C to 7. Uh, we also analyzed the XL dimension preoperatively and postoperatively using specialized soft, uh, software program. Um, again, the uh, CSM, Patient was quite uh, large, uh, 23 patients. The follow up period was almost two months, uh, two years. Three level was most commonly done 20, in 27 cases, and four level, 11 cases. As we can uh, expect after surgery, the Franklin grade and JOA score was quite much improved. What about in the radiographic analysis? Uh, the axial dimension was quite much improved postoperatively, but we found cervical curvature and cervical RM was reduced. And the percentage of the RM preservation was 73. Regarding the postoperative uh, decrease of the RM, uh, so far many doctors reported the decrease of the uh, cervical RM postoperatively. And the reason could be decrease in the uh, extension angle. So this was my uh, summary of the study. Uh, in those uh, total cases, uh, th uh, there was no implant-related complications such as breakdown or dislodgement of the implant. Stability or fusion of the reconstructed lamina was found at minimum follow-up of one year. But there are several uh, drawbacks such as low doses and RM decrease, as I mentioned additional cost and time for the implanted. But I think this method provides a very safe and rapid ease procedure. It can provide immediate and rigid fixation. And it has advantages, especially uh, it provides the very firm bony attachment through its own unique design and can provide a uh, very strong and prompt stabilization, even in the cases of hinge side fractures. Uh, this paper was published in 2002. Uh, the uh, authors here uh, elevated uh, lamina on both sides, uh, unlike our 
the method. And they concluded spinal alignment and RM were all preserved in all patients. Now, let me introduce the possible complications of laminoplasty. It is well known postoperatively transient uh, can occur from C5, most commonly, than C6, C7. And we can find some posterior neck pain after surgery. What about the hinge side displacement or graft displacement? Interestingly, after using the hydroxy appetite, Japanese groups reported some interesting complications. It is delayed dural erosion and CSF leakage. But we found uh, the, uh, this kind of complications, delayed dural erosion, comes from the breakage of suture before bone fusion or dislodgement of the spacers, especially in the midline splitting alignment of plastics. We never found uh, such a the complication in my series. Now, I'd like to introduce uh, ultrasonic osteotome in the laminoplasty. This is uh, we we are using in my operating room. It has the very unique blade of reciprocating blade at the top. Bone sculpture or the ultrasonic osteotome is principally tissue-specific osteosurgery, so it has many advantages. It can reduce the loss of viable bone, it can reduce bleeding, and quite safe and easy control compared with the high speed drill. Actually, we can find many articles uh, using uh, the uh, ultrasonic osteotome and their advantages. Uh, th these are some advantages and disadvantages of high speed drill and ultrasonic osteotome reported by Dr. Nakagawa, Japan. Recently, we are doing the analysis uh, comparing high-speed drill versus ultrasonic osteotome line of plastic. Uh, uh, as you can see in this diagram, before using the osteotome, uh, we, find, we found the complications of dual tearing in 9% and hinge side fracture, one case. After introduction of the uh, ultrasonic osteotome, there was no dual carrier, but we find we found hinge side fractures in 20%. What about the blood loss and mean time for each laminoplasty? As we can expect, the blood loss and mean time was quite much significantly reduced after using ultrasonic osteotome. I'm gonna show the, my method of the uh, laminoplasty. So after that analysis, we are using the ultrasonic osteotome and we are using the high speed drill on the hinge side. So this is the hinge side method and this is open side ultrasonic osteotome. So this is a stepwise procedure of my method. We are making the hinge side gutter using high speed drill, making open side opening using the osteotome, and flip up, insert the uh, hydroxy appetite spacer and mini plate complex. Like this. But first, we are making the gutter on the hinge side using high speed drill. And the other side, open side, we are making the gutter using the ultrasonic osteotome. And as you can see on the right top of the video, uh, I'm elevating the lamina using rainier plier gradually. Then I put the hydrocephalic space and mini plate complexes like this. So this is my conclusion. Actually, there are many debates regarding the surgical indications, technique, and timing of CSN and OPLA. And the surgical indications should be considered depending on individual cases. 
uh, my method of modified open door laminar plastic seems to be a quite safe and rapid easy procedure and it has some advantages of immediate rigid fixation especially even in the case of hinge side fractures thank you very much for attention